y'all ever just like sat and thought like I should have just stayed with who I was already fucking with like from jump it just worked just could have just worked it out like it wasn't even that deep it wasn't that deep bro like you be sick like damn I should have just Reverse car. Uno. Uno. And now I'm done. Boring. It was never a question of if I knew how much truck drivers make because mm -hmm. I don't really care. <laughs> I ain't gonna hold you. You got me tighter than the booty up here mm -hmm. because do you know how many good men are truck drivers? Yeah. To hear you say that. There's nothing wrong with a good man being a truck driver. It's just no. that of my options that I have to pick from. The least, the one that I was attracted to the least was the one that just said truck driver and gave no context description or nothing else. And I feel like she has the right to say that. But hear me out though. Respectfully, I could see why men be frustrated because I'm ready to pull my hair out because you did not give a concise answer. They asked you 15 million times. Can you give me an example of a, of a job? And you answered it every butch way. But the question. There's no. Yo, look, uh, man, if y'all haven't seen that part of Pop the Balloon, basically she just popped the man's balloon because she asked him, what did he do? He was like, I'm a truck driver. You know, I drive truck for a living. And she just pops his, pops his balloon, bro. And it was crazy because it set the world ablaze. Cause man, look, there are some solid guys out there, man, that ho will hold, hold women down, hold their families down. I know a couple of them, man, straight stand up guys do anything to help their, you know, their their brother, their neighbor, whatever it may be, man. And it's crazy is because her ignorance to that profession possibly and most likely made, you know, let her pass up on a good dude. Guy is probably looking back at this episode and saying, man, I am super happy she popped my balloon. So now you are so dumb. You are really dumb, for real. If I say, hey, I'm home chilling, doing nothing, and a girl says, okay, would you like me to come over? And I'm like, yeah, if you want to, that's not good? That's bad? I mean, I'm not saying that it's bad. It's just like, it would just rub me the wrong way because, why would it rub first a, of all, why would it rub a girl like, the wrong way? I feel way? like the girl shouldn't have to ask. If you what do want, you mean? If you want her to come, then you say, like, I want you to come. What if it's like a so-so? Like, hey, you ask me what I'm doing, and I'm like, oh, I'm in the crib chilling. Would you like me to come over? Yeah, if you want to. Yeah, but I feel like it sounds like you're just trying to be polite. How is that being polite? Like, you I can just really say no. You're just trying to be polite. That means I don't really want you to come over. It just gives too nonchalant. What do you want me to do? Yeah, I want you to come. I want you to. I come. have to say, yeah, I want you to come. Yeah. But what if it's like, if yeah. If you want to, like, what do you mean if I want to? If you, you want to, up, that's your choice. Do you want to or no? But you brought it up. What you mean? You brought it up. Here's what I think, man. What's wrong with just saying, yeah, you can come over? What is wrong with that, man? Why do we have to put something extra in that? You know, do we actually have to jump out of our way and just give you a whole, you know, a whole emotional breakdown of, oh yeah, oh my God, you you asked him to come over? You want me to come over? You know, to be honest, that just kind of tells me maybe the type of guy she was dealing with in the past, all right? The moment, you know, she was like, you want me to come over? And these guys were probably like, oh, hell yeah, like, just come over. We about to, like, dog, just come do, do, do whatever. I'm going to order this food. We're going to do whatever. We're going to have a good time, blah, blah, blah. But when you get a man that's really chill and he's at peace, really chilling, and he just says, yeah, in a very casual conversation, yeah, you can come over. What's wrong with that? All right, that's two different type of guys, man. You're going to get somebody that's probably simping or spending time with you versus a guy that probably necessarily doesn't have to. All right. Does he appreciate your company? Yeah. Does he want you there? Yeah. He said, yeah. So I don't get the issue, you know, with this one girl making it a big deal on the way he responded. And I know picking up vibes, picking up energy and all this stuff at the end of the day. Yes, you can come over. Is that not good enough? 
We have a problem. And says he's upset with me because in his words, sweetie, you need to stop spending so much money on DoorDash. Ordering it three times a day is not appropriate and we need to start living within our means. Honey, it sounds like you have an income problem, not that I have a spending problem. Start Ooh. earning more money and we won't have Ooh. these issues. So I took his credit card that we share and I booked a vacation for my daughter Richard and I. We're staying in a hotel tonight and I hope he enjoys that I charge $8,000 to his credit card. Make more money, darling. My husband Bro, I really hope that this is a joke because man, this is just worst case scenario. This is throwing away a whole relationship on a credit card spending, like a, like a, a, a purchase oh this is just frustrating it's kind of hard to find the right words basically she's out of place and out of line straight up man has an income no he's trying to put you in line because you have a spending problem that's exactly what it is all right you chose to be with that man y'all are partners y'all have a child together obviously there's different goals and different things that are aligning in that guy's mind and what he wants to do and accomplish with his money and that's not spending door dash three times a day when your ass could be cooking Let's just put it out there. Go cook a damn meal. <laughs> now that I see how scared men really are to, you know, be used for their money, guys, I'm here to help you. So I want to start a series of ways that you can know if a woman actually likes you or if she's just there for your coin. So okay, put up. if a put woman up. doesn't have a job, a car, or a home, she needs to have all three. If she doesn't, she's in survival mode. She's looking for somebody to supply those needs for her. And honestly, there's too many ways to make money that does not include sex for a woman to be trying to survive off of that. So that is red flag number one. Only deal with women who have housing, a car, and a job. I mean, that's a man with common sense would know that. All right, we, we know people can be down on their luck. You know, you can be housing is hella expensive right now. Let's just put it like that, man. If you're trying to rent an apartment downtown in Houston and that's like $200, $2,500, yo, you might not, you might need a roommate. You get what I'm saying? Especially if you're, if you're, if you're just working a, a regular job or whatever it may be, but you gotta have a car, bro. Like you gotta have some way to get around. That, those are big three you know? and i can understand someone not having all the big threes and but they got to have a reason why they have to have a goal in mind to get it you don't want to go with and start dating a girl that says hey look i got a car but i really don't have a place to stay okay well what's what's the goal like are you trying to get a place to stay are you in school what what is it maybe no nah, i'm just crashing at my, my mom's house i'm gonna figure it out that's the type of woman you don't want to mess with because her figuring it out is her asking you to help her figure it out using your own down the line you don't want that mother been married 22 years now my stepfather has no issue with digging in his pocket anytime my mother say hey one dude can i get this when? he don't have a problem however that's because when my stepfather come home he don't touch nothing there's mm. food at the table. It's warm. Ooh, she love. treats him how like a husband. Yeah, just how but, it's but, together, exactly. Yeah. But yeah, nowadays, women just think no that you like know. That. Hell no. If you, you me, I'm, all, all I gotta do is you. That's it. That's they, what a lot of women think. I'm cute. I got a pretty yeah. face. All I gotta do is. And, that's it and, and i'm gonna get that but then you want to be treated like a wife yeah. you can't have that yeah. no, that's why i was saying when you said you from the, i'm from dc from um piggybacking off of what you said <laughs> as far as paying the bills that it needs to solely be for the woman who helps provide and do all of that stuff for you too because you confuse a lot of these girls out here thinking that all i gotta do is fuck them because like you say you fuck them and i get my bills paid yeah, man, she has a valid point, dude. That's back, but that's back in the day stuff. They don't make them quite like that anymore. You're gonna come across these knucklehead type of women that that just think that they all just, you know, all that in a bag of chips. Man, I love the alignment. When a woman is acting, you know, we say this all the time, but a woman is doing her role and really taking care of you after really taking care of the household in her. And I really think there's a disconnect on the picture of why women just don't really get that whole thing. A man is taking care of the household and you. Yeah, some people can say that's both things put together, but like if you really break it down, that's a whole person in a household and everything that comes around that. If a man is taking care of both of those things, financially, taking care of the maintenance and all this other stuff, or at least getting it done, 
what can you do for him? There's only one way. If he's taking care of two things and all your main purpose is to take care of that one man and making him happy, how is that too much to ask or too hard to do? <laughs> <laughs> my last relationship we broke up because he asked me to marry him but then he asked me to sign a prenuptial agreement and i said absolutely not i think that's bogus i'm not gonna sign a piece of paper that says that if you leave me i get nothing like no i think that i should have half of everything that you've worked your entire life for and i think that's fair Ooh, that boy had it on his mind, man. I, I promise you, he had it on his mind. When men really think prenuptial agreement, I really think that they know, look, I got a lot to lose and they don't want to lose it. There's some sort of status and they don't want to lose half of it because it happens or they're basically paranoid about you. And that's just a red flag. If a man just says, man, I, I don't feel good about this. I probably, you know, I love you, but I'm doing a prenup. Like, that's already signs, man. You don't even give this man enough confidence to think that you can, you, he trusts you enough with his own wealth before he met you. Like, Who does that? How much money should uh, your man make a year, Heather? Eight figures. Eight figures. Okay, so that's Bro. $10 million. Bro. How much do you want your man to make? I would like, yeah, like a successful entrepreneur who is making more money than me. So minimum baseline minimum. of a six-figure man, minimum. Yeah. You guys are comfortable with being delusional. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm not delusional. I've dated a guy whose house was eight figures. Have you ever dated a guy who makes $10 million a year? Oh, please. I've dated brokies. Now, if that guy makes $10, 20000000 million a year, how comfortable would you be if he cheated on you every once in a while? Not all the time, but once a year. Heather, I love you, baby, but I'm going on a business trip. <laughs> By the way, I made $10 million this year. I feel like your G-Wagon that you're driving. <laughs> I mean, like the mansion. That's how it is. That I so you're I okay do, with that. I agree that is how it is. But Ooh. there's, you know, that's, there's a payoff for everything. No, so Ooh, the payoff is you pretty much know what time it is. And that's living in delusion. Yeah, because you want this nice G-Wagon. You want this nice house. But the love ain't there. It's all that sounds superficial, right? You just said that was okay with you all right either you're keeping it too real or you just or shallow or that whole relationship is just fake and superficial let's just put it like that Bro, come on! i only want to no deal with guys that's paying bills i am a gold digger mm -hmm. i don't care i'm already doing 100 percent perfectly by fine by myself exactly so if you want to come into my life and get my time and get my effort mm -hmm. and my energy you need to be offering something yeah. And honestly, I feel like every guy cheats. I've been cheated on and I was paying for everything in the relationship. Ah, <sighs> something screams mid basic about it. You get what I'm saying? If, if you're doing all that, man, and man still goes out there, you might have an issue. I am gonna take that off the, off the plate now, but something screams mid. Look, man, back in the day, for you to be with someone, man, you had to offer her like lambs, cows, horses. <laughs> donkeys to the the woman's father right now what are you offering these days you know to someone that has been tainted all right men were get men was giving up acres of land to marry women back in the day like the perfect woman for them all right somebody that's just gonna come from good bloodline somebody told me the other day this woman come from good blood right here and that i'm like wow i said perfect sand dog shout out to black if you're watching this bro but man what are you offering to get invested in someone now these days? Like that's just 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 the question that you gotta ask yourself. Ugh, wow. mm, what a terrible position to be in. I really feel for Victor. This is just too much pressure. She is thick. She got that thing thing. That was definitely made in Taiwan. Mm. Only way to get that is to eat that kung pao. <laughs> it's a thong in there holding on for dear life. Facts. I'm sure her name is Sue Isha. Victor's looking for Jesus right now. He's like, God, please. Sukiana. You know I got on thin slacks. Please. Bro got his hands down there like in that casual, like I'm going to hold my hands together. <laughs> Bro, no time it is. 
start dating for money because at this point all you have is trauma and if you're gonna get more trauma you might as well get a trip to europe out of it right so you're willing to put yourself through pain and suffering just so you can get a trip to europe yeah make it make sense i think we that need to no move problem. lonzo that ain't no problem huh? that ain't no problem would you rather date a woman who was fit and slim or a bbw um i say for me to date fit and slim but I like the BBWs too, don't get me wrong. They do got a very, you know, they got a nice pocket of love they have there. What do you feel bigger women tend to have over the more slim, thick ones? Um, bigger women, BBWs, they got the, you know, the most nutritious in the world, I say. It's very husky, very meaty, very moisturized. Whereas slim, thick women, <laughs> they look good, it's nice and tight, but you just never know when you get it. It's like a box of chocolates when it comes to that area. <laughs> But you can't go wrong with a 10 second in the microwave honey bun. We all know what time it is, all right? If you ever had, if you haven't had a honey bun in the microwave for 10 seconds, go do it, bro. That will change your life if you eat snack food. All right, guys, this next clip is, you know, it's kind of drawn out, man. And uh, some of it is, you know, her explaining the 1% to the 99 cent. I did add it because, I mean, I think it adds value to this uh, this video altogether. It's a little bit hard to keep up with, man. You just got to keep up with the, you know, her explanation. But other than that, it's, it's still, you know, something relatable to what we're talking about. Every man has to be concerned about gold diggers, especially these days. It's not about the 1%. It's more to do with the 99% because the 99% has something to lose. You understand? You see, the 99% do not want to lose what they have. And there are many women out there that would like to tap into their resources. You see, not every woman has the capabilities to bag a 1% man. They may think they do. 99% of women do not have what it takes to turn the heads of a 1% man. So you have the 99% of women with the 99% of men. That's where the gold digging actually happens. That's where the problem is. For instance, say a man earns $60,000 a year. He's got a car. Maybe he purchased a nice home for himself. And then you have a woman that realizes he has a home, he has a car, he's employed, and she would like to tap into that. Now you see the problem in that scenario is that she doesn't care for this man. She's only pursuing him for his resources. That is a risk for that man. Now let's look at it another way. How about a homeless man? He's got a nice tent. He's got a big juicy cup full of quarters. And now there's a homeless woman that comes along that does not have a tent. She does not have quarters, but she wants access to his tent and his big cup of quarters. But she doesn't like this man at all. Now what she's gonna do is run game on him so she can get his tent and to spend his quarters on a Sprite or to get some McDonald's. But again, the key is this was her goal. This was her pursuit to go after what he has. That is also gold digging. You see, gold digging is not about how rich a man is. It's the fact that the woman is digging. Gold digging has nothing to do with the size of the shovel that a woman is digging with. It's the fact that she approached this man with a shovel in hand. The size of the shovel does not matter. And the thing about the 99% of men, they do not want to lose their resources to unethical women who only want them for what they have, no matter what it is. Listen, I understand where this hawk two girl is getting at, but baby, why you gotta do all that? If your head game's actually good and you don't got a gag reflex, like mom, after a few times of it being like all the way down here, hitting, you know, the uvula, You'll have spit all over that thing. Oh man, hot to a point 2.0 remix. When nobody says if that man still talks about his baby mama negatively, he still loves her. I don't care if he talks down on her, if he makes fun of her, whatever it is. If he says that she's crazy, why did he make her crazy? Why is he talking down on her? Because he still loves her. I don't care what anybody says. Anybody that talks down on an ex still loves them. But let me explain. 
if that man that someone else's baby daddy that married man that you're dating still talks negatively and he tells you all these negative things instead of talking positively about the mother of his kids it's because there's something still hurt inside of them that they don't want to deal with so therefore they have to crap on these people so that they seem better so you have to ask yourself how much of this is true how much of this is a lie because god forbid you end up on the other side what are you going to do end up looking like the crazy person another person to his story to add he can't be the victim in every story sweetheart he can't be the no 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 no. he's the villain and the sooner you understand that the sooner you can get out of your situation now if you get knocked up and you join the 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 numbers uh number one two or three and you're three third or fourth what kind of life do you think you're gonna have it's not a one size fit all in this category uh i don't think all men apply to this and they got some dudes out there that actually you know respect and love their baby mama for what it is they it, you know grown enough and mature enough to understand it just didn't work out i know some dudes they absolutely just have not recovered all right because you lose a lot and you, a lot of times you lose the ability to spend time with your kids you get robbed of that because hey look most of the states most of the time you know the kids are always with the mother you know and, and you just spend working your life away to pay child support and we we hear about hear about it it doesn't settle well man you don't heal from that a lot of times but i don't think it's a one size fit all so you mean we just got gators that could survive underground now like how prehistoric is these things they just told me alligators like they don't they don't die like they really live forever but living underground underwater crocodile but a under concrete crocodile that's a whole nother yeah you know